Hi, I'm James with TVS Pro, and today we're doing another DJI video, one that I have been waiting to do for a while now. There's been rumors about these flight modes, and now they're finally out as of Monday, September 7th. We're talking about the intelligent flight modes. These are firmware updates available for the Phantom 3, as well as the Inspire 1. These flight modes include course lock, home lock, and more importantly, point of interest flying, waypoint flying, and for the Phantom 3, follow me. These are going to change the way you guys fly. It'll make things much easier doing circles and being able to control the camera independent. Like on the Inspire, it will make things a lot easier. For today's purposes in the demonstration and training we'll do, it's going to be through the app. So I've got some mirroring going on behind me and you'll be able to see the flight simulator and see these copters doing those and we'll cut to some shots of the copters outside actually doing that. But we'll have better audio and whatever else doing it this way. So we're going to jump right in. Like I said, we're going to do this in flight simulator mode. Before you enter that mode, it's always best to remove your prop. So I've gone ahead and removed those propellers. Next thing we're going to do is turn on my radio and turn on our copter. After the gimbal does its little dance, the app should give us an aircraft connected. Now, again, normally you would click on enter camera view, but for our purposes, we're gonna click on this question mark up top, which will take us to the flight simulator mode. The copter does have to be on. In order to do this, if you're unfamiliar with the flight simulator mode, uh, if you're not, get familiar with it. It's a great way to practice without damaging your copter. Um, you'll notice this all looks pretty darn familiar. After you update your app, as well as your copter, that firmware update for the copter does not affect your radio, so there's no firmware that you have to do for the radio, but you've got your flight mode switch here. Typically it's in P Opti, okay? If we flip it over twice to F, or flight mode switch, you'll notice I've now got this symbol that pops up here. This is all part of the new firmware update. Very exciting. Once you click on it, you've got your intelligent navigation. Um, really exciting stuff. Course lock, home lock, point of interest, follow me, and waypoints. We're going to go from left to right, okay? So course lock, actually we have to take off first. So I'm going to hit my auto take off, slide this over. Props are going to start up, taking off. It's now up into the air. I'm going to turn on my volume so you can hear talking too. Okay, now that we're in there, I've got complete control of my copter. Let me put it back over into this mode so that you can actually see it. Okay, we're going to bring it over towards us so you can see it. Now, if I flip that back over to flight mode, I've got that navigating tool that pops up. So, course lock. Course lock means that no matter which way it's facing, forward will always be forward. So, before we do that, you'd probably want to Put the copter exactly the way you want it for forward to be forward. The best way to do that is to look at the butt of the copter. Look at the battery, basically. I've already got the battery. I haven't yachted either way, so I'm going to hit apply. Okay. Now that I've hit apply, if I go forward, forward is forward, right? Okay. Well, what happens if I rotate 90 degrees? So we're going to rotate 90 degrees, and if I go forward, Typically, under any normal situation, it's going to go to my left. However, if I press forward, it goes away from, from me. So what I can do is I can press forward and yaw the entire time, and it keeps on going forward, but it's rotating in a circle. Okay, That's course lock. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time because it's not really new from DJI. The Phantom 1 was doing this kind of stuff. Okay, Next feature, then, is home lock. Now, a lot of people don't use this, but it has its benefits. Okay, Home lock basically means Forward will take itself away from its home point. Pulling back on your right stick will bring it towards that home point. You can set that home point wherever you want to. So if I, I'm going to flip it over to this way so that window is hidden. I'm going to increase my altitude a little bit and put it right over this corner. Okay. We're pretty close that way. Okay. So there's my copter. If I put it back over into flight mode, and I'm going to hit home lock. Now, I can touch this home point button and reset my home point. So if my home point wants to be right there, I'm going to touch this guy. 
Set current aircraft position as the home point. Yes, that's exactly what I want it to do. So now the home point as registered on my GPS is not where it took off from, but I just reset that home point out over here. Well now if I say apply, because now I'm going into home lock mode, if I press forward, it's going to travel away from that home point. If I press back, it's going to travel towards that home point. If I roll to the left or to the right, it'll maintain a circle, but it doesn't maintain the camera towards that home point, okay? Again, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time on home lock because again, this is not a new feature. Okay, so next feature is point of interest, and this is really exciting. This is gonna make your circles perfect and effortless, and if you're flying the Inspire, you'll still be able to control that camera uh, independently while it's doing point of interest if you really wanted it to. So I've already got my Phantom hovering. I'm gonna select point of interest, and what it's asking is to record your point of interest. So in the real world, while you're flying it, what you would want to do is aim your camera straight down. Fly above that object so now you know exactly that you are directly above that point of interest or whatever object or person it is that you want to fly a circle around. But in this situation, I don't have that ability of the FPV mode. So I'm just guessing. We're just gonna use the yellow landing pad as a reference. You'll notice I've got my altitude in red. If I increase my altitude, I have to be at a minimum of 15 feet. So once we get to 15 or 16, it should go green. Increase that altitude a little bit more there. At 17 feet, it will allow me to record my point of interest. So once I record that, and now that I've recorded my POI, I'm gonna want to back away from it, okay? And it tells you, you'll notice as I fly further away from that point of interest, my time for one lap increases. So at the rate of 2.2 miles an hour, it will take 1.2 minutes to fly all the way around. If I want to, either clockwise or counterclockwise, I can increase that speed and say, well, I want it to do it in 20 seconds. 6.6 .6 miles per hour, I can say apply. It's just re reiterating to me my return to home altitude and what those features are set. Once I say okay, it starts flying. I've set it to go clockwise at 6.6, 7.6 miles per hour. What's neat is while it is flying this circle, I can still increase my altitude. So you'll look at my vertical speed indicator and I am accelerating at about one mile an hour. And if I really wanted to, I could control my camera with the gimbal dial at the same time. And while it's flying around that point of interest, increasing its altitude, I can angle my camera down and I could get some really cool spiraling shots. What's even an another added feature to it is that I can decrease or increase my speed however I want to. So let's say all of a sudden I want to go counterclockwise. Well, it stopped and now it's going counterclockwise at a slower speed, at half that speed. I can do that on the fly while it's flying. At any point, I can say exit. Do you want to exit this mode? Yes, I do. It stops and goes to a hover. That's point of interest. Point of interest. We'll record that as the POI. So now if I back away from it, in our altitude, I need to be higher. We've got to go to 15 feet. Sorry, I should have my sun hood so I can see. So there, now it'll let me record my POI. So let me go right here. That's my POI. And we're just going to do a nice and slow counterclockwise turn from that POI. So let's go from right there. It will take 33 seconds to do a complete circle. Say apply. Oh, I have to say apply again. Camera faces towards the middle and it starts my rotation. I'm not doing a thing. And I set it at 2.2 miles an hour, so that's pretty slow. Let's increase it and go to four. So I just doubled its speed. While it's flying this POI, because it'll just keep on going, I can increase my altitude at the same time. 
and rotate my gimbal downward and get a really cool spiral effect. At any point, let's go, let's go clockwise. So it's going counterclockwise. Let's just slide this thing on over to clockwise and it just stops and starts going the other way. And I can decrease my throttle to lower the altitude at the same time that it is flying a circle. Man, this is like effortless flying. This is so cool. Perfect circles and we will exit. Okay, and it stops. Perfect. The next feature is follow me. And we can't do an entire demonstration here, but I'm gonna show you how it works and we'll cut to a shot where I'm walking around and you'll see the copter follow me on all on its own. So same principle, we're going to start up my props, get it off the ground, and now I'm gonna click on follow me. You do have to be at a minimum altitude of about 30 feet. So I've got to increase my altitude, and you'll see the red meter go up to about 30. It's going to be closer to 33 feet, yep. Okay, so there we're at 36, and I can change what position or what fixated point that I want it to follow. but. Here's the catch, I can't do it in here because it's going to track the GPS module that's built into the radio. So I can say apply, and it's going to probably tell me, cannot enable follow me mode because the GPS signal is too weak. Basically, I don't have GPS, I'm indoors, so I can't do it. But all you would say is apply and start walking. There's some other features and things that you can set while you're doing it, but that's pretty well it. Last feature, but certainly not least, waypoint flying. And I'm actually really excited about this because you can still control features while it's doing it. You can tell it how you want to fly that route. It's really cool. So after I click on waypoint, it's going to ask you whether you want a new mission or a favorite mission. If you had a perfect flight route that you had before, it will save those and you can just fly it again without setting new waypoints. For this purpose, I'm gonna select new mission. And now it's asking for waypoints, C1, and C2 are the buttons on the bottom of your radio, okay? So you can touch record C1 and it'll record a flight mode or just use your fingers and push the buttons on the bottom. Okay, so I'm gonna use this white square as my flight path, okay? So I'm gonna go over this point and I'm gonna press C1 and have it record waypoint one. I'm gonna travel further to my next point of the square and say, waypoint two and now I'm going to travel to the other side and I'm not yawing the whole time I'm keeping the back of the craft towards me and you'll see what this does it's really cool I'm gonna get a little bit closer to that square okay and record waypoint three go back to the bottom end of this square and record waypoint four and then we're gonna bring it over here in front of us Too far, a little bit of a delay. And record waypoint five. If I bring it back even closer to us, it will record waypoint six. Okay. So once those waypoints are done, I can select done. And now it gives me some other features. Do I want it consistent with record, meaning keep the orientation of the aircraft while it's flying those waypoints, or what I think is pretty cool is I can say consistent with the route, meaning it's going to face forward in the direction that it's going. And it doesn't fly robotically. The other ones used to fly, the other features in the Phantom 2 would fly very robotic. It would go to that point, stop, turn, fly to the next point, stop, turn, fly to the next point. This one will round those edges and rotate or yaw the craft at the same time. So you get some really fluid motions, almost like a human is flying it rather than a robot or a, or a true drone. At the end of it, I can select whether I want it to hover 
or return to home. In this case, I'm just going to leave it as hover, and my fat finger selected return to home. So we're going to select hover this time, and I can tell it how fast I want it to fly this route. We're going to leave it at about five, and I'm going to say apply. So if all goes well, it should go off to my right side here after it uploads these waypoints and fly to waypoint one. And you'll notice it rotates in the direction that it is traveling. Goes to waypoint one, rotates, and goes to waypoint two. And during this, if I want to, let's increase its speed. Let's get it back up to close to eight miles an hour. You notice it's not stopping. It continues that path, rotates as it's flying. Tells me the distance the whole time. And now it comes back towards me. Camera is facing the direction that it was traveling, and it's done. Here's waypoint flying. So we're going to do new mission, and we're going to use these lines as a reference. Waypoint one, waypoint two, waypoint three, waypoint four, right in front of us for waypoint five, and then we'll travel this way for waypoint six and we'll have it come right back to us. And the reason why we're gonna do that is because I kept the copter facing that direction the entire time, but now that I say done, it asks do I want to be consistent with record, and yes I do, and say apply. Agree to my return to home altitude, it uploads the waypoints, and it'll go. 85%, 100%. Low battery, so there's point one, rotates. Waypoint two, waypoint three, waypoint four. Goes back up to waypoint five and comes right back to us to waypoint six. Really cool. Guess what, we're gonna swap batteries. Waypoint flying, we're going to do a favorite mission, we're going to do the one we just flew and say apply, only this time we're going to do consistent with route. So now instead of facing forward the entire time like I flew it, it will face the direction that it is traveling. Apply it, agree to the return to home altitude, it will upload those waypoints, we're at 14%. 30%, it's turning towards the direction it's going, and it's flying at the same altitude we had it before. Look at that nice rounded edge. and it's facing the same direction that it's flying the entire time. And then I set it to hover. I can set it to land. In this case, it's just hovering. It's really cool. Those are the intelligent flight modes. If you've got questions, send me an email, jamesb at tvspec.com. Thanks for watching, guys. Happy flying.